Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Welcome to the introduction of, to the Let's Learn Arabic course. As you can tell by the title, the course is focused on learning Arabic. So the course objectives. First and foremost is to help those with basic Arabic reading improve their fluency. And it's also to aid students currently studying Arabic, develop their grammar from basic to advanced and to improve their vocabulary and empower them with the tools for further development and study. No course will really teach you fluent Arabic because Arabic, of course, like all languages, is constantly developing and changing. Words come, words go. However, we will, inshallah, empower you with the tools to do your own further research, to read your articles, your newspapers, to watch your documentaries and to, inshallah, conversate with people in Arabic as well. And thirdly, is to help native speakers improve their fusha, their classical Arabic or standard Arabic as opposed to colloquial Arabic, and to enhance their grammar, inshallah. For the most part, this course will be structured using the book Arabic Tutor, which is a translation of an amazing book called Tasheel Al-Adab. Fi Lisan Al-Arab by Mawlana Abdul Sattar Khan, popularly known as Arabica Mu'allim. It's honestly an amazing book. It's a reader. It's an Arabic reader. So this basically just means that it consists of lessons on sarf, etymology, morphology, and nahu, syntax, two really important aspects of Arabic grammar. And it also provides you with vocabulary, many amazing tests, comprehension tests and exercises and whatnot. All courses need a structure. So for the most part, especially the first 15 lessons or so will be based solely around this book in future lessons inshallah we will use articles web pages wikipedia pages and whatnot and translate them and test our skills and whatnot so as stated this is just an introductory class so today we're not going to focus on any specific grammatical concepts or learn much new vocabulary however i will go through some key terms that will be used throughout the course as, as you may know, generally when Arabic is written, it doesn't have the tashkil on it, the diacritical markings. So for example, the word marhaba would be written like this, marhaba. But you can also add the markings, the fatha, dhamma, kasra, zabar, zair, pesh. The, this marking is known as a fatha. Sometimes it's known as a zabar as well in the South Asian languages. This is a kasra, which is known as a zir in the South Asian languages. And this is a bomma, which is known as a pesh in a South Asian languages. A letter that has a zab... Uh, <laughs> this is Arabic class, right? A letter that has a fatha on it is known as maftuha. A letter that has a kasra on it is known as maksura. And a letter that has a dhamma on it is known as madmuma. As you can see here, this letter ra in marhaba has neither. This mark here is known as a sukun. Sometimes you might also see it written like this apostrophe type thing sometimes you might see it as an upside down triangle a letter with this sukun on it is called sakina and the mark itself is called sukun and one other term or one of the diacritical marks, should I say, that's used is this little W type sign. This is known as a Shadda. It is also sometimes known as a Tashdeed. A letter with a Shadda on it is known as Mushaddada. Mushaddada. As you can see here, it has the shadda on it. So to recap, di the diacritical markings are fatha, dhamma, and kasra. A word with a fatha on it, a letter with a fatha on it is maf 
Matuha. A letter with a dhamma on it is Madmuma. A letter with a kasra on it is Maksura. There's also Sukun. A letter with a Sukun on it is Sakina. And there's the Shadda, which is sometimes known as Tashdeed as well. A letter with this is Mushaddada. It is also important to note that letters can sometimes have two fathas on them, two dhammas or two kasras. In that case, that is known as tanween. So these would be called fathatan, dhammatan, and kasratan. However, we don't need to bog ourselves down with this for the time being because this will be covered in later classes. When do you use a single haraka when you use a two harakas this will all be learnt in future lessons inshallah so that brings us to the end of this class as i said this is just an introductory class in the next lesson though we will start properly and we will learn the three types of arabic words there will be no new vocabulary learnt in that class however from lesson two onwards we will start learning vocabulary as well and we will focus on sentence construction and whatnot and you will see how in the space of let's say an hour you can already start forming compounds and joining words together to form proto sentences because arabic is an easy language it's not difficult to learn and inshallah if you try and if you're consistent you'll find it easy so with that i will let you go and i would just like to ask you of course to like comment subscribe and share the video with your friends